All right, welcome back. Uh, this is still The Polity, reaching you live from the Abuja studios of Captain Television. Right now, I've been joined by legal practitioner Victor Patola to speak on uh, legal matters and the judiciary and their effect in the aftermath of the February elections. Elections are just about um, 24 days away or 23 days away. And um, as we've seen prior to the election, we've seen um, litigations and cases uh, that are pre-election. And uh, we wonder what will happen after the elections and um, uh, so on and so forth and the role the judiciary will play in this and bringing justice and come uh, back to the situation so welcome once again mr victor Thank you. Thank welcome. You very much, all right um, let's start with um uh, the basis i don't know if we should go into details first or anyway let's just start with the most um uh, obvious case the most recent one uh speaking of ocean state um, okay. the tribunal um judgment um this is um you know uh, an election after the fact being kind of um, rescinded. So I wonder how much of these do you expect as we go into the election, considering the Electoral Act and the what should be different this time around? What do you foresee happening post uh, February 25th and taking it into account what happened in Oshun State and your thoughts on that matter? Okay. Um, actually, I envisaged um, a lot of these um, um, legal matters will arise. Why? The first reason is because going into this election, we are going into this election with a new set of electoral laws and with new, especially the Beavers machine. You know, a lot of things, normally the way it ought to be is that in America, for instance, now, before a politician, you know, starts campaigning, he aligns some certain individuals to go through the laws. For instance, he aligns the lawyers and the accountants. First, the accountant to make sure that his tax record and his accounting details, everything is in good shape. Then his lawyers to go through the laws to make sure everything he's doing is in line with the laws. That is how it ought to be. But um, the way it is here is that a lot of our politicians just went into the election. They were not aware of how this new electoral hat can adversely affect their political fortunes. So even the political parties also a lot of them were not um, well advised going into this election we can see that from the afarazad way in which they conducted their primaries you know after the primaries then going into the campaign period then the election a lot of politicians will actually you know run foul of the electoral act which we have been seeing the way um the way the primaries and that's the pre-election matters have been going so far you know a lot of them will run into issues with the electoral law and after the um what's the name after the election i envisage that um, a lot of issues will arise because the way the electoral act is um is structured it's it's it devolved the power back to the people the way it has been structured now this electorate devolve the power back to the people so there will be various shenanigans by politicians in such a way to ensure that um, they they will want to continue with the uh, with the game they've always played before this electoral so some will backfire some will not backfire but what is a given is that there will be many of such instances that are called in um in ocean state after this election except except um the parties and the candidate understand what just happened in this um ocean state election and guide against it before um, we go into the general election all right uh, I, now you you mentioned something about um the electoral act devolving powers back to the people yes and i think um a lot of people were excited about that prospect now taking into account uh, you, you might have to correct me if i'm wrong but the judgment um this, the tribunal judgment sets yeah. aside over 700 um, results from over 700 polling units yes. due to overvoting. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what we're hearing, uh, it seems as though the Electoral Act says that in, in such instances, it shouldn't be a cancellation. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be some sort of um, a rerun or a redo or something okay. of the such. Mm -hmm. Let's even take, you know, remove the Electoral Act just for a minute. Uh, to remove 700, over 700 polling units, isn't that tantamount to you know changing drastically the results of there which is actually what happens when someone else is um, declared the winner so what really happened there uh, people wonder 
Is there, are there still loopholes that are being exploited here? No, actually, one, uh, what happened was that um, it was just administrative mistake of INEC. Okay, when we look at it, it was not actually an overvoting problem. It was an overvoting issue, but it was not an overvoting issue if you look at it stringently. Because what happened was there was disc discrepancy in numbers. Okay, um, when the petitioners, when they went to INEC to get the beaver's machine, to analyze the result of the beaver's machine, the result gave them one particular number. Mm -hmm. So when they went back, you know, the, um, the, the way it works is that um, um, the beaver's machine will upload a particular figure. So that figure it uploads, there will be another figure which will need to be reconciled. I, I don't know, how do I explain this better? For instance, now that particular beaver's machine, the process of uploading the numbers of, um, um, of accredited voters through the beaver's machine is in such a way that you have to go through the process. For instance, now if you press send, all these things will upload into the INEC database. If you don't, there will only be limited numbers of, um, of messages that will be sent to the INEC database. That was the problem that happened. So the, it, it, it so happened that there was discrepancy in regards to the number. A, number was, a, a, a system of INEC was reading one particular number, then another system was reading a, separ a different set of numbers. So what happened was that just one single thing that INEC needed to have done just to upgrade, not, the word is not upgrade, you know, to, um, um, there's a way INEC is supposed to reconcile those figures, which they failed to do. Mm. That was the problem. It wasn't really an issue of overvoting. So what happened was when the discrepancy happened, the court stated that the figures they would go with was that on the beavers. So that was the problem. So it wasn't really an issue of um, overvoting. It was just that it wasn't reconciled. The both figures, the figure on INEC, uh, on INEC database and the figure on the, um, what's the name, on the beavers was not reconciled. So there was discrepancy and the court decided to go with the beavers because the beavers supersede everything when it comes to accreditation. All right. Uh, uh, it's interesting when you um, break it down um, in that manner. So, um, you know, going forward uh, or still on that issue before yes. we move forward, I don't know if, if you are uh, able to speak on it, but there, there is a, a part of the judgment that was released that uh, people have been talking about mm -hmm. where the judge seems to make use of some words where he says um, the second respondent, I, I believe, which is referring to the Ocean State Governor, uh, can no longer, you know, quote unquote, uh, go low, 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 or cannot booga or something like yeah. that. I, I, what, I don't know. What's going on there? Is that something that is normal? Is that something that just happens? Because um, Nigerians are a bit shocked. Yeah. Naturally, um, the way it has always been, you know, judges used analogies mm. in their judgment. Mm. It is not about Nigerian judges. Judges outside of this country, mm. they use analog analogies. Lord Denny is famous for his quips in his judgment. He used different sort of analogies to drive home their points. So, Although this particular analogy, this particular um, quip or, ex um, or, you know, the way this particular co um, judge, you know, gave out this gololo or something, it's um, it, 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 it wrong. Not because it will upturn the judgment, it won't upturn the judgment, but because it smacks of uh, malice. No, it smacks of malice, you know, as if you are in malice with um, the current governor of the state, you know, just to probably, uh, you know, just stick it to him or something. Mm -hmm. But it won't upturn this case. You know, it's, um, it's an obiter. It doesn't go to the fulcrum of the judgment. It doesn't affect the basis of the judgment. So mm -hmm. it can't upturn this particular matter. So it, I, I hear people, you know, talk about it, you know, don't, don't let's, although it is inappropriate, mm -hmm. it is agreed that it is inappropriate, but it has no bearing on the mm -hmm. substance of the judgment itself. All right, that's um, um, fair enough. So uh, now February 25th is just um, around the corner and uh, we'll be seeing, like you said, uh, more cases. Uh, I, I, I refer to an event that happened, I think, yesterday or day before yesterday. The yeah. MBA had uh, uh, a dialogue where yes. they met with the various candidates and spoke about it and promised to guard the legal space. So in that regard, I, I wonder... From the from as a lawyer, what are the expectations? You know, 
that uh, we're, we're really that you really want from whatever whatever government emerges both at the national and across board you know what is that attention that you want that the judiciary to get uh, that perhaps is not getting at the moment okay uh, b before i go into that you mentioned something earlier on that i would like to talk about you know you mentioned that some persons have been talking about the fact that the judgment of ocean state ought to be that of um, rerun mm, yes. and not outright um, deduction of vote and you know it ought not to be rerun Mm. The Electoral Act, I can't remember the section immediately, stipulate what will happen in certain, certain instances. You know, in this particular instance, what the Electoral Act stipulated is that the vote will be deducted. And once the vote is deducted, whoever, won, uh, who, whoever votes is, you know, of good margin to the other, you know, is declared the winner of the election. So the Electoral Act, there's another instance that the Electoral Act said that it will be annulled. Mm. For instance, now, if INEC had noticed this, you know, this particular discrepancy, they could have chosen to annul it. You understand? But at this particular point in time, what the electoral has stipulated is that the deduction will happen. And once the deduction happens, whoever has the highest vote, numbers of votes, declare the winner. Yes. Well, but I guess this question is not for you, but do you think perhaps INEC should um, look back into this. You said that there, there should have been some sort of reconciling. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the question is, what happened no, to the cause the that the discrepancy? The, 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 the problem was that INEC was um, the mistake INEC did was that the when they released the two figures, at least before releasing the two figures, there is no way you not understand that there is discrepancy in the first figure you released to the petitioner and the second one. You know, once you release the first figure and you know that the second figure there's discrepancy, you have to wait to reconcile it before releasing it. That was what I knew. See, this thing shows us that um, there's still a lot of work to be done. Mm. However perfect or near perfect the beaver's machine is, you know, what we need to guide against is the cost of human errors in this coming election. Because human errors, however perfect, however detailed everything is to ensure that this election is free and, f and fair we must guide against human errors because what led to this ocean state um of turn is human error pure and simple yeah but some persons say this my uh, there's some level of intentionality to this i know you said it isn't over voting but there are there are um, uh, instances where people speak about uh, someone trying to get ac accredited and then the fingerprint doesn't work there um, I think the facial doesn't work mm. either. And apparently, these persons are supposed to clear off immediately. Uh, if you can't be accredited, yes, you can't vote. But we hear of um, situations where these persons just find their way back to the line and end up you know, voting. Is that something that is possible in the first place? And if it is, yes. could, is it something that could be exploited where uh, politicians look at places that are not their strongholds mm -hmm. and you know, uh, uh, what's the word, encourage over voting so that whenever there's the discrepancies, that um, pulling in gets... Let, let's just get this thing, off. let's just get this thing clear. You know, um, what is over voting? Over voting is where the numbers of um, accredited voters mm. is lower than the votes, um, uh, that the vote, vote casted in that particular polling station, mm. at the polling unit. So, you know, the instances of um, somebody getting accredited and um, not getting yes, accredited yes. and coming back to vote, it's, it seems, um, it's, 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 it's I, I don't understand that how that could actually happen exactly. Yes. Because accreditation, the proof of accreditation is what will make you to be able to vote in the first instance. So, so why do you think that happens? The overvoting in the first place shouldn't even be possible. No, you see, I don't believe there was an overvoting in the real sense of overvoting. Mm. That was not the problem. The problem was discrepancy in figure. Now, let, let me give you an instance now. This is the Beaver's machine. The way the Beaver's machine works is that you, um, people get accredited, here on this people's machine and you have to press send to make sure that this information here goes to the database any database for one reason or the other the um beaver's machine was not did not um, probably calculate the total numbers it was supposed to calculate so there was discrepancy between the numbers on this beaver's machine and the figures at the INEC back end for some reasons that was not clear Mm -hmm. But it wasn't 
I don't think it's an issue of fraud over voting. That particular instance, maybe somebody chances her, somebody was supposed to just spread send, sending the information to the NA database, and due to one or two reasons, the person didn't. So that is, and it's not about. So it allows the person to be able to vote there, but it didn't register. Well, it didn't register. Yeah. So there was discrepancy in the number of this Beavers machine and the number that INEC had at the back end. Which INEC upon get upon when the voting was done, they were supposed to reconcile it, at least see it, go through it and see it and reconcile, but they didn't. So when the tribunal was sitting, they noticed the discrepancy. Because when they got the beavers, they went through the beavers, got the numbers on the beavers, then the petitioner went ahead and get the numbers on the Heineck database again. There was discrepancy. So they used that one to prove the issue of overvoting. All right. Uh, just, just to run up on this matter before we move on, I just want to get the final confirmation now. What you're saying is that those polling years, they weren't thrown away. It's just that the beavers numbers were taken, right? Yes. There okay. was discrepancy and it wasn't um, reconciled. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't an issue of um, overvoting in the real sense of overvoting. Yeah, but, but, but did, it, did the judgment no, throw it see, Yes, yeah, indeed. Those polling indeed, units. those polling units there. You see, the implication is that once there was this discrepancy, looking at it, what it meant was there was overvoting. But there was no overvoting in the sense that um, people were thumbprinting more than. Mm. But the implication of the discrepancy meant there was overvoting. But in the real sense of people thumbprinting more than the accredited people didn't happen. But the discrepancy in figure led to the conclusion of overvoting. All right. So, uh, so finally, like I was saying, what. what um, uh, you in the judiciary, what are, what are your expectations and the demands uh, perhaps that uh, you might be needing from whoever emerges? First, um, whoever emerges, I expect that the person sees law, the judiciary, as an institution towards economic development of this country. You know, gone are those days where the best you see the judiciary or the legal institution has is just. Um, dispute dispute resolution process it has gone beyond that if there is a solid judicial system in this country it will ensure that there is economic growth it will impact on the economic growth of this country how do i mean if cases are dispensed with quickly there is no clog in the system one investors international investors both local investors and international investors they will have confidence in the system they will have confidence in the system and be able to invest in the country Underst with the understanding that even if there is any issue between business issue that leads them to court to be resolved quickly and in no time. So whoever is coming, whoever will become the president of this country in line with the judiciary should understand that the judiciary, the legal sector as a whole, is a partner in progress towards economic development of this country and is not mere a um, dispute resolution process. It is of fundamental importance to the economic development of this country. It is an institution on its own that gives investors, that gives business people, you know, confidence in the system itself. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Victor Patala, for coming and for really breaking this down. I, I believe that there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, wrong thinking or misconceptions that we had about this topic. And thank you for uh, laying it to rest. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. Thank you very all much, right. Robin. Uh, that's all we can take on the program today. Uh, do join us tomorrow and uh, along the weekdays uh, by 2 to 3.30 3 uh, for more discussions on the state of the nation, politics and governance. Have a nice day. Go out there and get your PVCs if you haven't already and see you tomorrow. Bye.